verses 1 to 3a. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and his disciples began to pick some heads of grain, rub them in their hands, and eat the kernels. Some of the Pharisees asked, Why are you doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? And Jesus answered them, Have you never read? Bow your heads with me. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for the hope that we find in your word, Lord. We thank you for the examples that we find in your word, Lord. Not examples of how we have done mighty things, not of our righteousness, Lord, but of your righteousness, your holiness, who you are, Lord, your love and compassion that extends so far, Lord, your grace upon grace upon grace, and your mercy so great, all fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to hold and reverence Jesus Christ as our Lord, to follow in His commands, to be led by the Spirit, to be like Christ in this world. Open our eyes to hear Your Word today and apply it to our hearts, Father. We just thank You for the time that we can come here and freely um, learn about You, Lord, without persecution. Lord, the, the different versions of the Bible and the availability we have and everything else. Help us to not take it for granted, Lord, but to use this time that we have of, of all this abundance of being able to serve You, Lord, to serve You with, with, with um, our utmost ability, Father. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I had Mark finish like that so you could kind of get an idea of how Jesus asked the Pharisees, have you never read your Bible? Basically is what he said to them because they wanted to throw scripture at him and teaching at him that was not biblical. And that's why I said in what I've said in Lee's letter, and I'll be doing some of the same thing, you're taught a lot of things that the Bible says. But if you went and looked to see if the Bible really says it, have you twisted Scripture in your own way? And do you listen to Scripture and obey it? You know, it's easy to keep something like don't wear lipstick because that's a sin. That's an easy thing to do. That's not a truth from the Bible, by the way. But it's hard to love your enemies, isn't it? So it's easy to make up these rules and regulations and live by them and think you're righteous. But do you love your enemy? Do you love as Christ loved and gave Himself? See, that's hard. It's hard to live out those biblical principles. In fact, it's impossible. But that's why we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us, giving us the words on our new heart of flesh, not a heart of stone, so that we can live for Jesus. And that's why we need to realize and know who God is and what He's done through us for Jesus. And is He your Lord if you will follow him if anyone chooses to come after him and say that they believe so i entitled this lord of the sabbath what does that mean to you and we're at luke chapter six and we'll see how far we get normally i have three pages of notes maybe four i think i have eight or nine here <laughs> but i want to remind you saying that that you know they met together daily and everything in the first church okay no, I'm not going to preach for two or three hours. I'm just going to preach for however far I get. Well, I'm going to set a timer. This will be a con to be continued. But you're taught so many things that the Bible says, and maybe they're based on it, maybe they're true, maybe they're not. You need to study God's Word so you can be approved workman who rightly handles the Word of truth that you know what's in the Bible, that you're approved by God, not by man, because you handle this Word of truth correctly that you don't let it be a dividing point or anything else, and you don't lose focus on what's important. The disciples didn't understand it. They didn't understand it up until the time that Jesus ascended into heaven because they said, Are you at this time, Lord, going to reestablish the kingdom of Israel? And He said, It's not for you to know those things. Those things are what we have so much controversy over. End of time things. What is the Sabbath? We're going to talk about that today. You might like what I tell you, and what I, you might not like what I tell you. But the Sabbath is pretty, pretty clear in biblical doctrine. I can teach it to you in truth. 
whether you accept it or not, that's a different story. But yet the Sabbath is so controversial out there. Pretty simple topic. And it's biblical doctrine. The coming days, the rapture, the millennial reign, everything, that's not so clear and that's not doctrine. But you guys should know doctrine and know how to handle it. So what is the Sabbath? Are you thinking about it? Do you keep the Sabbath? What is the law? Oh, it is a top ten commandment, right? Okay. Your traditions that you have to deal with also that say, oh, we meet on Saturday or we meet on Sunday or we do things this way or we do things that way. You have to contend with them as well because you were taught that. There's so many things that I was taught growing up that as I read my Bible, I realize <laughs> there's not a lot of support in the Bible. They might be, not be wrong things to do or anything else. Oh, let's talk about fasting a second. Is fasting a good thing? Fasting is a good thing. Was it commanded in the Bible? Well, let's, let's think about it. On the Day of Atonement, not other days. Hmm. But when Jesus said, and the disciples said, when you fast. So it's something they did, and if you fast for the right reasons, it's a good thing physically and spiritually. Before you just think, hey, the Bible commands me to fast for these amount of days. No, it doesn't. So make sure you're clear on that. As I said, the church, if we look at the original example, they met every day. If you look back in the Old Testament, they worshiped and sacrifice, gave sacrifices daily. They didn't come meet together on Saturday or Sunday. It was something that was a part of their life every day. And if you wanted to do it really was God told you, you'd write it on the doorpost of your house. You'd talk about it when you get up, when you go about, when you go to bed, everything else. Because it's all about God and His gracious love that the Old Testament points to Jesus Christ. Jesus told them about the Scripture pointing to the, Him when He talked about uh, on the road to Emmaus and, and in other places too. Your life was created by God the Creator, redeemed by God in Jesus Christ to live for His kingdom, His will. When Jesus taught you to pray, He said... Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Do you hallow his name? Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come. And then a reliance on us for God to give us even our daily bread every day. We have kind of traditionalized it down to meeting, like I said, Sunday for an hour or two. Oh, if you're really, really good Christians, you might go to a Bible study through the week or, or go to Wednesday night service. But they met together daily because they knew that they needed God's Word. They needed, knew they needed the fellowship with one another. It meant everything to them. Yes, mankind is called to work, but not to work to create things because we're not supposed to build up kingdoms on sand. We're supposed to build up treasures in heaven. Yes, we've got to work, but you are also supposed to worship and praise God and thank Him daily, hourly, all the time. So, did you read February 29th's devotional? What did you think of it? <laughs> there wasn't one. So you got a Sabbath from reading it that day. You got a rest. That's what the word means. But, but we're going to talk a lot more about that. This week's devotions, ironically, started with the first commandment, and they led into the Sabbath, which, hey, that's where we're at in Luke. You know, God planned that before time began, that that was exactly how that was going to happen. Wow. This week's devotion started with the first commandment, you shall have no other gods before me, little g there. And we seem to think that we don't have other gods, that we don't have idols in the world today. Just because we don't bow down to them, we don't make a graven image as it says, and we don't bow down to them, but how many idols do we have? I just said before, you work for things. You don't work so that you can have just a bed to sleep in or a roof over your head. You work so you can have a nicer house, more things, be honest, period. And that's the, that's the country we live in. I'm not saying it's wrong or anything else, but those can very well be idols. So when we get to the Sabbath, and that's why I'm mentioning that first, then we say, well, uh, there's different things the Sabbath means, and, and, and I'm keeping one, and Sunday's fine, and Saturday's fine, but biblically I'm going to define to you what it, that says again. Idols are other loves. You serve them because you work for them, spend your money on them. 
So are you kidding yourself, which is what the devotion said, that you're breaking the commandments? The devotional says at first glance you may not think you, uh, that you do. You, we must not kid ourselves, though, about breaking this command. He went on to say, ask yourself, do I joyfully acknowledge God's comprehensive claim on my life? as creator of all things and as redeemer of your life, if you believe in Jesus Christ. Is God in charge of my family, my work, my relationships, my money, my dating? I, that one's not applicable to most of us. Maybe some in here. <laughs> my use of time. Take a close and honest look. Are things in the right place? If we do not daily submit ourselves to Him and entrust the entirety of our lives to Him, something will take His place. No other gods before me. So that takes me up to the fourth commandment. What is the fourth commandment? Do you know it? You should study God's Word so you know. Most of us do not know exactly what the fourth commandment says. Or we cut it way short. We, we might get this part. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Most of the time we'll forget it and just remember the Sabbath day, but it's by, by keeping it holy. What does that mean? We're saints. We're holy. We're set apart for God's service. This day is set apart for God. One day out of seven that God established and set it apart for, for glory to Him, including rest, it means rest, because you rest from the other day's work. It's not a day of just rest, sorry. It doesn't mean that you can just go out and enjoy your life that day. It's not just a day to meet and go to church that day. It's a day to set it aside for God and His glory. How do you do that? And Jesus is clear because the Pharisees don't understand it. They've made all these laws that He's Lord of the Sabbath and He does good on the Sabbath. If you go and look at the word study of the New Testament, look when the Sabbath is used, you'll see the Sabbath used and they went into the synagogues and taught on the Sabbath. Jesus taught on the Sabbath. Then you'll see controversy come up, which is where we're at in Luke's story, because Jesus does good. He does the things that He came for. He heals the blind. He heals the deaf. He, he, does, he, he does these miracles on the Sabbath just to get under their skin. It's what takes Him to the cross. We, we get into the scripture where we're at now in Luke 6 where the scribes come in as backup to the Pharisees and where they uh, get with the Herodians and bring in politics and government because this Jesus has to die. Before he was just against them and he blasphemed. Don't, don't forget that. But when he starts doing things on the Sabbath, it's time for him to die. And he doesn't just say, hey, uh, is it okay to do good on the Sabbath? He says the Son of Man, which points to him as the Messiah, and he says is Lord of the Sabbath. Lord meaning God, the one who actually installed the commandment of the Sabbath. He is Lord of it. He wrote it. It's about Him. Do you not understand this? So it is not, we'll clarify that first, just a day of rest that I can go do whatever I want to and rest. It's a day of rest from your regular labors so that you can do things for God. Now the Pharisees had crippled it because of their laws, because of tradition and everything. Don't pick up too much of this. Don't do too many of this. You know, when the, the disciples went through the grain fields picking grain, the first commandment they broke, not the pulling the grain and everything else, was how far they walked. You could walk 1,999 paces without breaking the Sabbath, according to the Pharisees. It's a half a mile, that's it. They were on their way somewhere and going through the fields, and they had walked long enough to get hungry. They had walked more than 1,999 steps. They had done more than a Sabbath's day journey. Mm. following Jesus to take the good news of the gospel message to the sick. Because the Pharisees, of course, didn't consider themselves sick. They didn't need any healing. The devotionals you read this week were good. We got into the Sabbath, but I want to point out something also, that the Sabbath is not the same as a day of worship. It is a day of worship. It is a day of coming together. 
It is a day of rest. But you are commanded to worship daily. You get a rest from your work each day when you come home. And, and do every, if there's 24 hours in a day. If you work eight, you get twice as long to rest. Some of that is sleep, of course. But even if you have eight hours of sleep, you have a rest period of, of equal to the time you work, if that's what it is. The sun and the, the orbit of the earth around the sun determines our year. You can't change that. The, the earth's rotation uh, gives us our day. But the week, we could change however we wanted to, does not we? That's amazing that we have a seven-day week which God instilled in creation. Why don't we have three ten-day weeks? That sounds a lot better to me. It would work in the math. You just have a half at the end, just like you have to pick up leave here. Then we could work seven days on and three days off. We could all have that three-day weekend we always want for ourselves again, not for doing God's glory, but it would work. It's been tried to be done in the past, but we're on a seven-day week still. It's not a man-made thing. It's ordained in creation by God. And six days he worked, and the seventh he rested and set it apart as holy at creation, not in the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments go back to creation, period. But the week is set up in seven days. Our calendar is set up specifically. You can't change which day is the first day of the week. You look at any calendar. Sunday is the first day of the week, not Monday. Can't change that in your mind and say, well, the first day of the week is Monday because that's when I start my work week. And the seventh day is my Sabbath, so it is the seventh day. The seventh day of the week is Saturday. Period. Can't change it. And the law is to remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Oh, the seventh day is for right. In some ways, and wrong in so many ways. But the Sabbath is Saturday. We worship on the Lord's Day or Resurrection Day, which is Sunday. We have a two-day weekend in the United States. A lot of countries don't. So ideally... In my mind, and scripturally, that would mean that Sunday, if we gather for worship, then Saturday truly gives us an opportunity to set it apart wholly for the Lord. But I guarantee if you went out there and surveyed Christians, not anyone else, just Christians, they would not realize that they should set Saturday aside for the Lord and keep it holy. I told you you might not like everything I say, and we'll get into it. Here's the rest of commandment number four. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God, on which you must not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your manservants or maidservants or livestock, nor the foreigners within your gates. For in six days, that ties it together. If God set the example, who are you to say differently? For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them, but on the seventh day he rested. Therefore, that ties it together even more, blessed, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy. We have holy again and we have set apart so we know that. It was put at creation, God ordained it. Oh, that means it was before sin. This is a holy standard of God. I don't know what eternity will look like or anything else, but I know what he established here before sin. He established six days for man to work. Folks say we're not idle, so we don't get into trouble, whatever things. And a day to rest and contemplate and praise God and do good because Jesus expounded upon the law. Oh, yeah, if he didn't expound upon the law and we didn't have the, the Sermon on the Mount, we might not ever realize in our, our th way of thinking that if I'm oh, angry in my heart continually over my brother, that I have committed murder in my heart. Same thing is true here. Do you consider each and every day as a gift from God? So do you set apart one specifically Saturday if you want to be biblical, to do good deeds, to worship God and to gather together. I got to go to my phone now because I was still writing at 2 a.m. texting Sherry <laughs> when the Bible verses popped into my head. <clears throat> Leviticus 23.3 3 says, this is from the New Living Translation, 
You have six days each week for your ordinary work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath day of complete rest, an official day for holy assembly. Now we get the assembly part in there. It's not there in the, in the text in Exodus, but here it is. So we're supposed to gather together on that day too. Oh, that applies even more to the church because if we gather together and here's my foot, and here's an arm, and here's a pancreas, whatever things, we can do more work because there's a body gathered together. We can do more good. We can feed more poor. We can share the gospel to more people. Not go to the lake unless we're taking people with us and we're, sell we're witnessing that way. But we've taken that Saturday and said, that's my day. Sunday I'll go to church for a few hours, but Saturday's my day. Sunday's my day too after church is over, but Saturday's my day. I need it for the rest. The Bible says so. That's not what the Bible says whatsoever. It's a holy day set apart for the Lord. It's an official day for holy assembly. It is the Lord's Sabbath, and it must be observed wherever you live. You do know the Ten Commandments are also in Deuteronomy, right? Let me read you the commandment in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 5, starting verse 12. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, as the Lord your God has commanded. Has commanded you, six days you shall labor and do all your work. But on the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God, on which you must not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your ox or donkey or any livestock, nor the foreigner within your gates so that your manservant and maidservant may rest also. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. That is why the Lord your God has commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Now we see the Sabbath day in the eyes of a Redeemer, not just a Creator which is what the Sabbath day is pointing to, why we're supposed to rest and do works. Because we know Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has come and laid down His life for those who will believe. That they can be pardoned from their sins, adopted into God's family, and have eternal life. Wow! This number four commandment is starting to look like it has a lot more weight, doesn't it? Have you thought about its positioning in the list of commands? It's right in the middle of those commands relating to God and our relationship with Him and those commands with our relationship with others. Maybe if we observe the Sabbath day more, maybe we would realize our relationship with God and get it better so that we could get our relationships with others better, which is the cross. Maybe that's what this resting is about. Well, some say that Saturday is the Sabbath. I think I've told you pretty much it is the Sabbath. It's not Sunday. Some say it's a Sunday and want to say that the church started meeting together on Sunday, the Lord's Day. They didn't honor the Sabbath. That's not biblical again. It's not even biblical to say they met on Sunday. Traditionally, you can trace that back to the early church until about 300 A.D., if you want to take Scripture, it does say Paul met with them on the first day of the week. That's because they were gathered together every day. He just happened to stop by on Sunday, not Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. It wasn't they were specifically gathered on that day. Jesus doesn't mention the Sabbath except for he does things on that day, and he asks, is it okay to do good? Is it okay to save a soul rather than condemn a soul? Could it be any day? I think I've kind of made that pretty clear. You can have a Sabbath two times a week. You can fast more than one time a week. You don't have to fast once a week. When you fast, but you do it on the Day of Atonement, it's commanded if you celebrate the Day of Atonement. Oh, the, the Sabbath was just a Mosaic law. I think I've cho showed you that. These are the different things that people come out with when they talk about Sabbath because they want to justify what they do which comes to any of our problems. I want to justify why I don't like that guy over there and harbor sin in my heart. He does this to me. He cut me off and got the parking space I wanted. Hmm. God established the commandment. He reassured it in the, in the Ten Commandments. He reassured it as, in the Ten Commandments as a Redeemer. 
And Jesus said, I am Lord of the Sabbath. Is it not okay to do good? Maybe it's not applicable anymore. No. <laughs> Maybe Jesus is our Sabbath, so we don't need a day. Well, if He made the command, if Jesus is God and made the command, then why would He lay it? That just doesn't make sense. He is the one who gave it. He even said it was a gift to man so that they would realize that they would rest, so that they would contemplate and at least not get in that burden of everyday work, that they would take a day and say, Thank you, God. And as you know more about the Lord of the Sabbath, then you can't stay silent. You've got to go tell others. And you've got to show them by your good deeds. That's how your light shines. So what do you think about the Sabbath? Do you, keep, do you remember it by keeping it holy? One of the things Jesus said a lot, especially in the Pharisees, but to the crowds and to the disciples too, is He said, you've heard it said before. You think this is the way it is, but I tell you this. What about the Sabbath? What does it mean to you? Let me give you a few more scriptures. It seems to be kind of that forgotten command. Like I said, not, not applicable anymore, whatever those reasons are. Well, to, to give you a thing on the not applicable, it's, it's, or it's just for Israel. Well, Paul said in Romans 11 that the Gentiles were grafted into Israel. He says the promise was to Abraham. The tree signifies the collective people of God, the wild branches that are gra grafted in along with the natural branches, forming a church, one faith. Wouldn't it still apply to us then? In Numbers 15, we read this, verse 32, While the Israelites were in the wilderness, a man was found gathering wood on the Sabbath day. Those who found the man gathering wood brought him to Moses and Aaron and the whole congregation. And because it had been declared that what should be done to him, they placed him in custody. And the Lord said to Moses, The man, shall, the man must surely be put to death. The whole congregation is to stone him outside of the camp. So the whole congregation took the man outside the camp and stoned him to death as the Lord had commanded Moses. Not something to be taken lightly. In Genesis 2, this is way back before the, the Ten Commandments, thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array, and by the seventh day God had finished the work He had been doing, so on that day He rested from all His work. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because on that day He rested from all His work of creation that He had accomplished. It's a day that points to eternal rest. Jesus Christ is Lord of it. And He said, don't worry about not picking up sticks. Do good. It's, it's to get you not to do your regular work today so you can do work for the kingdom that's okay. It's okay to take a bunch of steps. It's okay to pick the grain and mash it in your hand and, and what's the word for that? I can't think of the word. You harvest, you mill it. That's one I'm going to go with. And then you eat it. You prepared the food also. You did all these things wrong. <clears throat> Exodus 16. That's before Exodus 20. You don't have to be a math scholar there or, or a prophet or a scribe or anything else. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much food, two omers per person. And uh, all the leaders of the congregation came and reported to Moses. He said, this is what the Lord has said. Tomorrow is to be a day of complete rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Well, maybe it doesn't apply to the foreigner again. Isaiah 56, verse 3, Let no foreigner who has joined himself to the Lord say, The Lord will utterly exclude me, exclude me from his people. And let the eunuch not say, I am but a dry tree. For this is what the Lord says, To the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths, who choose what pleases me and hold fast my covenant, I will give them in my house and within my walls a memorial and a name better than that of the sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name. 
that will not be cut off. And he starts with Sabbath. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to Him, to love the name of the Lord and to, to be His servants, all who keep the Sabbath without profaning it, and who hold fast to my covenant, I will bring them to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Oh, remember when Jesus had to cleanse the temple also? He quotes from here. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. And it talks about keeping the Sabbath in there. In Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 25, The conspiracy of the princes in her midst is like a roaring lion tearing its prey. Sounds like Peter, doesn't it? They devour the people, seizing the treasures and precious things, and multiply the widows within her. Her priests do violence to my law and profane my holy things. They make no distinction between the holy and the common. They fail to distinguish between the clean and the unclean. They disregard my Sabbaths so that I am profaned among them. Her officials within her like wolves tearing her prey, shedding blood and destroying lives for dishonest gain. Her prophets whitewash these deeds by false visions and lying divinations, saying, This is what the Lord God says when the, when the Lord has not spoken. The people of the land have practiced extortion and committed robbery. They have oppressed the poor and needy and have exploited the foreign resident without justice. I searched for a man among them to repair the wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land so that I should not destroy it, but I found no one. The Sabbath points to Jesus, to eternal rest. And the reason we should honor the Sabbath, which is Saturday, and keep it holy is so we remember and stay focused on that so our lives don't get caught up in me, myself, and I, but instead say, oh, yes, I am working, I am doing that, but it's all about God And now I know it's also about Jesus Christ and His kingdom. And as I study the words of Jesus Christ, I'll understand that more and more. So maybe one day I won't harbor any more anger in my heart towards Him, especially for stealing my parking place. Okay, maybe you're thinking some, maybe you're not. I'm not trying to convict you to not do anything on Saturday. I'm not trying to convict you of anything. I'm trying to give clarity to what the command means. But who wrote the the words on the two tablets of stone. The reason I'm going to go here is because you're not going to get all these answers right, more than likely. Did God? Hmm? Did Moses? Wait a minute. Moses threw down the first tablets and broke them, and then God said later, chisel out these words, did he not? Oh, boy, that just made you think, didn't it? Exodus 34, 27, 28, The Lord also said to Moses, Write down these words in accordance with these words I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. So Moses was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights without eating bread or drinking water. He wrote on the tablets the words the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Does that change your thoughts some? If you study Scripture and study it enough, just like I gave you with the Sabbath, Moses wrote the other words that God gave him, not the Ten Commandments. But it sounds like right here that he wrote the Ten Commandments. Do you know the Ten Commandments literally means the Ten Words? But it's not ten physical words. It's the words that give us thought and reasoning and understanding. The Word made flesh and dwelt among us who teaches us so much more about God's Word because God is in the flesh living among us. Emmanuel. But at first that sounds like, hey, Moses wrote those. Did he? No. (laughs) No. The passage is about the second set of tablets. Do you know that traditions, there's where you get traditions in there, have taught that there were the, second set, the first set of tablets that Moses broke since they were holy, they kept them, and they put them in another ark, and they carried it in the rear instead of the front to remind them? Maybe that's true, maybe it's not. It's not biblical. Be careful when you take traditions and other things, especially prophecy when you get to the other side, and you put what's tradition or man's teachings into what's biblically true. Does that harm anything if they did? No. Does it prove anything? No. It's just something that's been handed down. So I'll remind you, there are a lot of things that you've been taught that you need to study God's Word to find out if they're truth. And then you need to apply God's Word to the way you live or you're a hypocrite. 
One commentary that I read on this, on Moses with the writing that I just read you that scripture, says, write these words. This is what this means. Since God's covenant with Israel was based on these, these and other words, it was important for Moses to write them. That was a commentary that I like. I look at this commentary all the time, but when I've seen that, I knew. Now, I'm not con going to condemn the commentary. We all make mistakes. If you ever hear me say anything, I spend a lot of time and a lot of prayer so I don't teach you something that is wrong. I try to teach you the truth, not from my own perspective, but give you the biblical and make sure that I study it well. That's why at 2 o'clock this morning, I was still sitting there with Bible verses going through my head so that I did not get up here and say anything wrong. Study God's word so you rightly handle the words of truth. Paul's words to Timothy, because he would be taking on that mantle and could easily wrongly divide the word of truth if he relied upon it himself. Then you would be passing down tradition after tradition that were not true. And then when we get this far down, we think when somebody says... The church originally started meeting on Sunday and did not do Saturday Sabbath observance. That's not true. Like I said, if you study history, that came about in the Catholic Church in the 300s. And you can, we actually have the manuscripts that say it. Is there anything wrong with meeting on Sundays? No. Is there anything wrong with keeping the sixth day and making it holy? You decide as part of the Ten Commandments. So what happened to the tablets that Moses broke? The Bible does not say, period, okay? But in, here's what we can learn from those two sets of tablets and who wrote them. Exodus 24, verse 12. Then the Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on my mountain and stay here, so that I may give you tablets of stone. With the laws and commandments, I have written on them for instruction. Tablet number one, come up on the mountain. I'll give you two stone tablets, pretty heavy, okay? I'll engrave on them. I'll give you the tablets. I'll write the words on them. Clear from Scripture. But after this, that was in chapter 20. Um, we see in chapter 23 or 4, I'm not sure here on my notes, Moses wrote down all the words. It would have been from previous. That's why I didn't say them. 34, actually, that, that Moses wrote all the words. So Moses wrote a lot of commands, excuse me, but not the Ten Commandments. In Exodus 31, so we'll back up from there, when the Lord had finished speaking with Moses on Mount Sinai, he gave him the two tablets of testimony, tablets of stone inscribed by the finger of God. Exodus 32, then Moses turned and went down the mountain with the two tablets of testimony in his hand. They were inscribed on both sides, front and back. The tablets were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God engraved on the tablets. But as Moses approached the camp and saw a calf and dancing, he burned with anger and threw the tablets out of his hand, shattering them on the base of the mountain. Wait a minute, I'm confused. That's Exodus 32. The Ten Commandments are back there in Exodus 20. Oh, this is not chronological. So you've really got to study. You've really got to study to be an approved workman or you'll be very confused. Okay, what about this second set? Oh, let's go to Deuteronomy instead of Exodus. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 1. At that time the Lord said to me, Chisel out two stone tablets like the original ones. Come up to, the, to me on the mountain and make an ark of wood, and I will write on the tablets the words that were on the first tablets, which you broke, and you are to place them in the ark. Okay, that's where those are going. So I made an ark out of a K of wood, chiseled out two stone tablets like the original, and went up on the mountain with the two tablets in my hand, and the Lord wrote on the tablets what had been written previously, the ten commands, the ten words. So now you know the truth because we just sat there and studied this and put this together. Tablets number one, God gave him the stone tablets, God wrote on them. Moses broke them. Tablets number two, you chisel them out now and you carry them up the mountain and back down because you broke them. And I'll chisel on the words. 
and that's the Ten Commandments that's put in the Ark of the Covenant. I doubt you knew all that prior to going into this. If you did, great for you, Barry and Bible study student, because you studied God's Word. That's why there were that group. That's why I read the Barry and study Bible some now, because they sat there and said, is this in the Bible? You're teaching me this, but is this in the Bible? And again, they had the Old Testament. I've told you these things to get you thinking about the Sabbath. Do you know that all of the Ten Commandments are quoted in the New Testament? Except for the Sabbath. That's strange. But Jesus said, I am Lord of the Sabbath, and Jesus said the Sabbath was made for man. It was a gift. In Colossians 2, we read, When you were dead in your, trespa dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your, nat of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our trespasses, having canceled the debt ascribed to us in the decrees that stood against us. He took it away, nailed it to the cross, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, He made a public spectacle of them, tri triumphing over them by the cross. Therefore, let no one judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a holy day or feast, some of your translations say, a new moon or a Sabbath. Don't take that out of context. A Sabbath, not the Sabbath, because that's what so many people use and say, Paul said it wasn't necessary here. No. He said if you have more than one Sabbath, we're not going to argue about this. If you fast more than one, if you have different new moon celebrations, what's a new moon celebration? Oh, study. And also realize that that's what the pagans used because they used a different calendar system. God ordained ours. I've already went into that. They used the moon cycles and did the moon harvest and that led to a lot of demonic worship that's still out there today and everything based off the moon cycles. That's, that's darkness. That's, I mean, I could get into all things, but I won't go down that rabbit trail. God established His, and He said, I rested <laughs> from my works, and I want you to rest. So even this command that was given before the fall, now in the fall, you can see there is a hope for eternal rest that comes through Jesus Christ our Lord. It wasn't given in the wilderness because... The ones that left Egypt didn't make it to the promised land. And the promised land, oh, well, we'll just get down there to that. Hebrews chapter 4, Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be deemed to have fallen short of it. For we received, all rec also received the good news just as they did, but the message they heard was of no value to them, since they did not share the faith of those who comprehended it. Oh, that takes me to James. Faith without works is dead. Don't claim you have that faith, which leads me right back to Jesus. Is it not okay on the Sabbath to heal and do good? For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever enters God's rest also rests from his own work, just as God did for us eternally. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will, be, will fall, fall by following the same pattern of disobedience. For, this ties it together. Here's how you find out about the truth. The Word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It pieces, pierces even to the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and intentions of the heart. That's what was the problem with the Pharisees that day. That's why this healing on the Sabbath led them to want to commit murder in their hearts and then do it so they thought no one murdered Jesus. He gave up his life as a sacrifice pleasing to God. Hmm. Isaiah said this, which Isaiah points so much to Jesus. This is how Isaiah, the book of Isaiah starts. Verse 2 First one is, I'm calling you Isaiah. Listen, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For the Lord has spoken. I have raised children and brought them up, but they have rebelled against me. Drop down to verse 13. 
Bring your worthless offerings no more. Your incense is detestable to me. Your new moons, Sabbaths, plural, and convocations, your meetings together. I cannot, in, for worship on top of that, I cannot endure iniquity in a solemn assembly. I hate your new moons and your appointed feasts. They have become a burden to me because you don't understand why I gave them to you in the first place. You don't understand that the Passover points over to the Passover lamb who would take away the sins of everyone who believed in him. I will... They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you multiply your prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are covered with blood. Wash and cleanse yourself. Remove your evil deeds from my sight. Stop doing evil. Learn to do right. And this specifically, seek justice and a Correct the oppressor, defend the fatherless, and plead the case of the widow. Exactly what Jesus said he came to do, and exactly what he was doing on the Sabbath. Jesus said the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Do you know that that was from the parallel passage out of Matthew? I had to think if it was Matthew or Mark. Same passage that we're reading in Luke chapter 6, but those words were added there. You won't find it in, in Luke chapter 6. Sherry started reading this morning with Isaiah 58. Cry aloud, do not hold back. Raise your voice like a ram's horn. Declare to my people their transgressions and to the house of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways like a nation just like it's easier to say old wine is better, but this new way, this is the right way because this is the Son of Man, the Lord of Sabbath, the one that is here, the one that will take away, that has authority to cast out demons, that has authority to call fish into a net or calm seas or whatever, how you want to explain that, that has authority to forgive sins, that has authority to heal on the Sabbath. Day after day they seek, me, they seek me and delight to know my ways. They are like a nation that does what is right, but they're not. And does not forsake the justice of their God. Oh, but they do. They ask me for righteous judgments. They delight in the nearness of God. Why have they fasted and you not seen? Why have we humbled ourselves and you not noticed? Behold, on the day of your fast, you do as you please. Is that what I do on the Sabbath day? Is Saturday my day? Do I have, if I want to say, hey, it's okay to make a Sabbath another day, do I have a day that I really make holy and set apart to the Lord that I remember everything, that what Jesus has done for me? If we go on in Isaiah 58, it says, Is this the feast I have chosen? A day for a man to deny himself, to bow his head like a reed, and to spread out sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast and a day acceptable to the Lord? Isn't this the fast I have chosen? To break the chains of wickedness, to untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free, and to tear off every yoke? Isn't it to share your bread with the hungry, to bring the poor and homeless into your home, to clothe the naked when you see him, and not turn away from your own flesh and blood? Boy, the Pharisees were not practicing this. If you fast, this is the purpose of fasting. If you remember what we've already covered in Luke, they said, why aren't your disciples fasting? That's what led the, them into Jesus giving the parable of the, cloth, new, the new cloth and the old garment and the new wine. And it's easier to say this old line is better that I sit back here and do my Sabbath my way and condemn you for doing yours wrong and blah, 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 and whatever it is. Don't you realize that Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath and He's telling you to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy and do good deeds. Don't in your hypocrisy think that you're righteous or keeping the law by condemning Jesus for doing de good deeds on the day he gave the command in the first place. 
So is the same true for keeping commandment number four? Remember the Sabbath by keeping it holy, a set-apart and consecrated day. I want to leave you with this. I'm only two pages into about eight or ten. Remember to rest. Remember to reflect. Remember to renew. What are we renewing? Relationships with God and with others. And be always remember to rejoice for the joy that has been given to you by knowing that Jesus Christ has paid your sin debt. Are you resting, reflecting, renewing relationships and rejoicing as you come along? So many of those Christians that are burdened by tradition or law or whatever the things they are burdened are like this. But Saturday is a day to remember the Lord and rejoice and be glad and show it to the world as you tell them. Father in heaven, I thank you and praise you for you are a mighty, wonderful God. I thank you for your commandments. I thank you that, it, that if we study that your word is clear. I thank you, thank you also that as Jesus said, if we consistently spend our time in, in the word and in prayer, how much more will you give us than a good father gives us? And you will give us the Holy Spirit to discern all truth, to reveal Jesus Christ, to be with us, to comfort us, to guide us, to give us gifts of the Spirit, to unite us together, Lord, so that we are the church, that we are the true Israel, the true believers, that we work for the kingdom because Jesus is our King. We celebrate Jesus Christ by the way we live and what we say, Father. Lord, empower us to be more like Christ. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.